warm welcome this morning to our um, Getting the Right Start live Q&A event. Thank you very much for coming along. Um, just if everyone who is uh, not speaking, all the participants, if you could keep your microphone muted during the session, just so we don't get background noise and it, and it improves the experience for everyone. Today's session is going to run through, it's a live Q&A format, but we have a a different theme going out throughout the three hours. So the first session is specifically about your study plan at DIFC. So it's questions about the program. You have all the program managers present to ask questions about anything from the academic side of things, questions about your assessments, um, the experience of, of the classroom. You can put all your questions forward in this session. Then the next session at 10.45 will be about your progression to university and how that works. And we'll have our university placement officer in for that session. And so you can ask any questions about um, how, to, how you apply to universities, the university partners, how the process all works, and you know how you actually get to university through the program. Then we'll have um, Sylvia, our student services officer, and she'll be talking about the student support services that are available. We'll also have some of our partners that work with us on that join that session um, in terms of guardianship and accommodation options as well. Then the last session at 12 o'clock will be about how you get there and the admissions process. So it'll, uh, we'll have our marketing and recruitment team, um, which involves me and, and, my, and my colleague Ray, and that will involve questions about the entry requirements, um, applying for a visa, um, English language tests, which ones are accepted, all the different um, uh, processes involved in getting you onto the program in the first place. So throughout the session, you are more than welcome to ask questions and I'd ask that you do so using the chat feature in the bottom. Um, and, uh, we'll see those come through and then you can, I'll, I'll put those to the panel, or Ray will put those to the panel. So the first session we'll start is your study plan at DIFC. So I'd like to welcome uh, Neil, our centre manager, Connell, our uh, academic manager and uh, program manager for business, Lorraine, our program manager for engineering, and Dennis, our program manager for the pre-masters program. I'd also like to welcome Ray, who is our Education Recruitment Manager, and he will moderate this session. Over to you, Ray. Thank you, Nairly. Um, good morning, everybody, and thanks for attending the Q&A event this morning. Um, I'd like to start initially with uh, Connell on the IFY and Dennis on the PMP. Um, just maybe if you could talk us briefly through what the structure of the program is. Um, Connell, maybe if you could go first. Okay, so the the IFY basically were divided into uh, three different streams, those being um, business, engineering and science. So on each of the IFY programs, students study four subjects. So e EAP or English is common to all four, as is maths. And then depending on the different streams, you study two additional subjects. So for example, the science and health science students will study biology and chemistry. The business students will study business and economics, and then the engineering students will study chemistry and physics. So uh, it's qu quite quite an intensive uh, course. It's loosely based on the A levels. Um, so the academic calendar will run between January and July, and um, with the the bulk of your assessment coming at the end of the year. So just in terms of the three subjects that you study for content, you know, so that's business, economics, and maths, or physics, chemistry, and maths, and biology, chemistry, and maths. And um, all of these exams, final exams, are worth 70%. And then the, the remainder, remaining 30% is made up of either coursework or exams. So the idea is that during your time at IFY, uh, at DIC, we build you up through the year and we um, 
introduce you to the topics of the theories and we do a lot of practice we uh, assess your ability if you need extra support and extra sub in some subjects we provide that so the, the idea is that we're building you uh, towards your final exams and making you uh, able to reach your your goals by the end of your time at uh, DIFC uh, and then in English it's a little bit different it's 50% English uh, final exam and 50% uh, continuous assessment. So you'll have four different assessments and four exams to, uh, uh, based on the skills. So the four skills being reading, writing, listening, and speaking. So again, we give you a lot of practice. We don't, um, we don't just give assessments with you without preparing you for them, giving you feedback, and making sure you're able to carry out the skills and the tasks. So we're guiding you uh, along the, the journey at DIFC. So that's a, a brief overview, you know, like, so we're very excited to see you here and we're looking forward to, to welcome you at DIFC in January. So maybe I'll hand back to you, Ray. No problem at all. Uh, thanks very much, Connell, for that insight. Dennis, maybe you could just talk us through the structure of the pre-master's program um, because it's it's quite a big area, especially for a number of students in particular markets. Yeah, great. Right, thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. So uh, I'm the PMP or the Pre-Masters uh, Program Manager. Uh, the Pre-Masters uh, Program uh, has two uh, intakes in the IFC. So some students start in September, uh, as some students start in January. Um, either start is fine. There is no big difference for the uh, eventual results because all students will uh, do the same exit uh, exam assessment and restart. So uh, the PMP is primarily composed of three main components. You know, uh, you have the uh, EAP, which is the English for Academic Purpose. Uh, you have the research methods module and then you have the management. Uh, the hours allocated to the three components are, are, are slightly different uh, because uh, we allocate the study hours and the class hours uh, according uh, to uh, how important the, the component is for your end result. So for example, uh, to enter university, uh, most students will maybe uh, for uh, need an EAP uh, B or C. Uh, so uh, this is a huge part of the uh, entry requirement. Therefore, usually EAP uh, students study about at least 10 hours in class, uh, sometimes up to 12, depending on the level of the students. Uh, and their intake. So that would be 12 hours of EAP uh, in class, uh, but then obviously there's a lot more hours added on for homework and uh, self-assessment work that the students do. As Connell was saying, uh, the EAP is assessed in two ways. Uh, so like for the IFY, uh, you do an EAP exam at the end of the year, which is worth 50% of your mark, uh, but the, the good thing about the EAP module is that it's also 50% assessment. Uh, we think this is really helpful for students. It means that they do 50% uh, of their final uh, assessed work um, actually in class and at home. Uh, so it's, it's spread out over time. Uh, it's very, very skilled focused. And this is really important because uh, we want to make sure that the students learn uh, the adequate skills that they're going to need, uh, not just to complete their exams or their assessments, but what is going to serve them well when they get to university. So a real focus of the pre-master's course is uh, to prepare students for uh, their, their academic uh, challenges in a master's course in an Irish or British university. Uh, uh, those challenges are, are quite are quite are quite strong if you don't. Um, the other part of the course is the research methods module. Again, uh, this is also to prepare students for uh, university because once you start to do a master's, um, you could be writing up to uh, possibly 20, 25, 30,000 words. Uh, that's a lot. So we uh, have a research methods module, which is four hours lecture per week uh, with two hour tutorials and uh, then uh, usually uh, a 20 minute meeting with the supervisor per week. So it's quite intense 
uh, but it needs to be because uh, the students have six months uh, to uh, complete a dissertation, um, which is about 12,000 words, so it's a lot, but it's a challenge, and a lot of the students enjoy it. The good news about the research module is that uh, students get to choose their topic, you know, so we don't impose a topic on them. They get to choose what they want to, what, what they want to research. Uh, the research is a mix of primary and secondary, so this is really important for students to learn uh, before they start their university course. Uh, and the top range of topics can be huge, you know, it, it's different students obviously choose different things, usually based on what they plan to study in the future. So, for example, if you plan to go to uh, Minute to study um, uh, finance in your master's, then you could write your dissertation for me about maybe online banking or you know so the the dissertation that they're doing connects into the topic and some students actually use this dissertation that they write uh when they arrive at their university you could continue this dissertation straight into your master's and it gives you a head start uh the final component uh gonna stop in a minute right the final component is uh management uh which is three hours per week uh some students uh ask uh, a very good question which is why do i need to study management uh this is not assessed um but we think that uh studying management is useful for all masters students because when you eventually complete your masters and find a job you know um very very likely that you will be in some position of management you might have to lead a team you might have to lead a small group you might have to lead yourself you know and, and these these are elements of management which are very important so people sometimes see the word management and they get stuck in a rush with the words but management means a lot of different things and our management lecturer has has many years of experience um in in giving uh lectures on the on the topics uh, uh if you have any further questions just put them in the chat box and i can answer them specifically uh and uh thanks for your time thank you very much dennis um i think you both touched on a couple of really important points there like for connell with the undergraduate students we're really trying to teach that independent learning you know, and the ability to stand on your own two feet when you go to do an undergraduate degree at university. And as Dennis touched on with the pre-masters, we're not just looking at you progressing to a master's, we're looking to help you to develop the skills that will take you into the workplace and your further career. You know, and that's really important. And um, maybe Neil, in terms of uh, just looking at you now to, to ask, Obviously, the situation around um, this year with the COVID-19 situation, you know, a lot of colleges have looked at a, an option around blended learning, um, especially for students who have. Uh, sorry, Ray, we lost. Yeah, OK, I, I think <clears throat> I got your question and um, you cut off there, Ray, but I think I got most of your question. So. Um, yeah, you're just asking about blended learning. Yes, uh, please. So what we are doing, um, what we we want to have students in um, to come to Ireland, and I guess we're going to have a couple of options. Um, if you do come to Ireland, we will probably have um, like the longer lecture style classes. So, for example, chemistry and business will be uh, still done online. Um, but if you do come to Ireland, we will still have tutorials face to face and we'll try to have peer kind of groups and things like that. So you can learn from your from your um, from your fellow students and you'll be able to um, you'll be able to come to the classes and you'll be able to meet your lecturers and you'll be able to have some face to face time. It won't be 100 percent online, um, but it won't be 100 percent face to face. Um, a lot of the lecture style ones will be done online still, and then some of the some of the um, tutorials, maybe the smaller groups, will be done online or will be done face to face, and you'll be able to meet your lectures. Um, uh, does that answer your question? Uh, I'm sorry. Can I just jump in there, Neil? I, 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 
Sorry, mm -hmm. Nelia. I think whatever happens in the next few months, uh, what's more important is maybe look to the future for all students. They need to mm -hmm. think ahead because uh, education is changing very quickly. And, and, and it, despite even before uh, the global pandemic, education had started to change. So I think in the future, all of our university studies, uh, certainly master studies, uh, will be a type of blend of learning, you know? Uh, so uh, the reality of the future is, is that uh, technology is going to be a, a very, very uh, big part of our learning. Um, and I think this is interesting, but it's very important for uh, students, current students to try to take that on board. You know, uh, if you think down to two years, three years, four years in the future, um, um, technology yeah. and blend uh, is, is going to be a major part of any course. Mm -hmm. And we're well, going to offer both at the moment. We're going to, like, if you decide that you don't want to come to Ireland, then there is an option to stay and study online, fully online. Um, as I said, we want students to come to Ireland because we think that the benefits of being able to meet your meet the other students, to be able to meet your teachers, and to, there will be a higher level of support if you do come to Ireland. Having said that, we're fully prepared as well to have you um, study 100% uh, online, and um, we will be able to offer all of the supports. Um, I guess the advantages of coming to Ireland are that you meet the other students, you get to see what Ireland is like, you, um, you know, and I suppose that um, living in Ireland is, is part of the journey as well, um, moving away from home and getting to meet other students and getting to meet your lecturers and just getting to experience Ireland. Um, but we will have, and I guess learning from your learning from your um, students as well, learning from the other students is really, really important part of what we do in DIFC um, and the whole experience. But as I said, we will be offering 100% uh, online learning as well. Um, and, you know, I guess there are advantages to that as well. There's advantages and disadvantages to both. Thanks, Neil. Mm -hmm. um, I think, Dennis, just to, to go back to the point you made, I think maybe at the beginning of 2020, nobody really considered blended learning or an online option, you know, and it was quite scary to students and to, and to, to parents alike. But I think now, you know, eight or nine months later, a lot of students have had experience of some form of blended learning or online teaching, either in their own country or even while they were here in Ireland. So I think people are more open to it now. And I think to just touch on the point that you made, you know, it's the way things are moving towards the future. And the most important thing for us at DIFC is that we can prepare students to get to university, whether it's at undergraduate level or uh, postgraduate level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. So, uh, you know, even if students come to Dublin and that's great and they are in our classes, whatever we would still have to uh do some uh online work with them because mm -hmm. that is a way to prepare them for the future you know so whatever happens it's going to be both you know yeah absolutely and i suppose the end the end goal is that you want to be studying you want to be going into your undergraduate or your master's program in september 2021 and that's the main goal at the moment for you to to you to for you to focus on that so whether you do that online or you do it uh, it's through blended learning, um, the end goal will be the same, and that will be studying and starting in September 2021. And, and if that's the way the universities are going to go, and it's going to change the landscape of the future, you know, our goal is to prepare students for that. Mm -hmm. So they don't get that shock when they go to university, whether it's for an undergraduate degree or for a master's. And, uh, and also companies and employers will be looking for a mixture of skills that you can learn both online and in, in classes as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Lorraine, I would just like to come to you now um, as the, the head of the engineering programme, really to just ask particularly about the, the science subjects because there is a practical element to those subjects and maybe if you could just talk about how they're going to work. Uh, with the blended option and also online as well, please.
Thank you very much for that, Ray, and hello and welcome to you all. I'm delighted to be here, delighted that you have all come to our question and answer session. So uh, my name is uh, Dr. Lorraine, as you can see, Lorraine Nolan, um, and I am the chemistry lecturer as well as the IFY engineering program manager. So I have plenty of experience of teaching uh, science subjects with students um, in DIFC. And um, so what we would normally do uh, with our program is we would go out to our partner university to their undergraduate labs and we would do practical experiments in physics, chemistry and in biology there. Uh, practical experience is really, really important and it, it's an integral part of the programme. Uh, it's worth 10% uh, of your final grade. Um, now, this year, of course, it's an unusual year, but practical experience still matters. So we are making uh, arrangements to ensure that you still obtain that skill. Uh, now, we, we're looking at two options. Uh, one is to uh, use a virtual laboratory. Uh, there's some very good software programs that, that we can make available to you to do this. Um, and there's also the other option uh, of, of doing a face-to-face in-class uh, experimentation. So uh, despite this, this online environment, we feel confident that we can still provide you with the practical skills that you would normally be getting. And we will support you in writing the, the reports. Uh, we want you to, to feel that regardless of the unusual circumstances of this year, that you are obtaining the same skills that students of every year get and that you go into third level fully equipped um, and, and, that, and that's it. Um, so I'll just pass back to Ray and Ray, uh, I just want to say uh, uh, if there's students have any questions at all, feel free to put them into the, the chat. Thanks very much, guys. No problem. Thanks, Lorraine. And, and thanks for mentioning that as well, because our program managers will only have for about another 15 minutes. So if you do want to ask any questions of Dennis, Lorraine, Neil or Connell, uh, now's the time to do so. And if you pop them into the chat facility at the bottom, we will deal with them. Um, Neil, I just want to go back to you because you did speak there about the fully online option. And obviously right now, you know, it's a, I suppose, a concerning time for parents, especially for undergraduate students, to let them travel uh, anywhere, you know, and I'm speaking as a parent right now. In terms of if they decide that they want to stay in their home country and study the fully online option, could you just talk about how that's going to work really around the assessment um, and also the progression to university, like, you know, what's agreed and, and what's currently being looked at? Yeah, so um, we're currently in semester one of intake one um, with the September intake and um, they're studying 100% online and the feedback from them has been very, very positive so far. Um, and we are going to offer that uh, option of studying fully online in January as well. Um, so in terms of the universities, NCUK are fully in support of us. So all of the NCUK universities um, are fully behind the online learning and are confident in our systems and are confident in ourselves and uh, that we'll be able to deliver the programs. And um, so the pathway is still clear and all of the universities are on board with us um, using 100% uh, online. Um, the HEIs, the higher education in Ireland as well, have had very positive feedback um, and they are fully supportive as well because as the others said, as Connell and Dennis said earlier, this is the way things are going in education and there is a large amount of online learning. So, you know, you are, you're not just, um, like this isn't just going to be a temporary thing. I think the world is changing and the world of education is, is changing as well. And this is a really good experience and it will give you a good kind of lead in to what's expected in university if you decide to um, study fully online with us as well. Um, so in terms of assessment, um, with the, so for example, chemistry or business, the subjects would have like 70% um, will be a final exam and 30% will be continuous assessment. So continuous assessment is, is going to be the same 
as it has been in the past where you are writing an essay or you're doing a lab report and then you're submitting that and we use software called Turnitin um, to check that just to check for plagiarism um, but we'll fully support you in that like and show you how to do the assessments and how to do all of the all of the different aspects and you know um, really really improve your skills um, I guess the other part of it then is the 70% which is going to be an, a, an online test so there are a couple of options for this so the examination could be done in the study centre if you decide to come to Ireland that would mean that you will still be doing it online but it will be in a study room with, with, your, um, with the other students and you'll be doing it on a laptop still okay the other option is if you decide to stay at home and you're doing the fully online, that means that you will, we're using, it's called online remote proctoring, okay? So proctoring is when you're, um, you're being observed, but you're still at home, okay? We'll be using software where we, can, we will record your screen and um, you will have to um, take your laptop and you'll have to show it up and then you'll have to turn it around and show the room. You'll have to leave your webcam on and you will have to leave the microphone on as well. Okay? And then um, we'll record the screen. So uh, we will take, um, lock down your computer and then you, will, you, will, um, you won't be able to copy and paste. You won't be able to search the internet. Um, and this is how they use this is the software that we use for the uh, online assessment uh, for your final exam, which is worth 70% and 50% in EAP. Okay. Uh, does that answer your question, Ray? It sure does. Thanks a million, Neil. Mm -hmm. um, Connell, we have a question for you that's come in, which is maybe if you could just speak about the difference between classes and tutorials uh, for students so they can actually understand what's the difference between those, you know, those two words basically okay yeah sure uh, sure um, sure um, we have a combination of different classes um, at the IFC so we have what are the traditional lectures where the teachers will talk you through their notes or the slides or introduce you to important elements of each of the syllabi you know so um, this would be uh, maybe what would be the traditional classroom where you listen to a lecturer talking about a subject but uh, we feel that uh, the benefits of DIFC is the is the individual attention and the accessibility of our lecturers you know so if you if you have any questions you know the lecturers are very used to dealing with international students you know we're able to explain things clearly you know very complex ideas from all the subjects maybe subjects that you haven't learned before but our, our teachers and lecturers are, are very very skilled and experienced in making hard things seem easy you know so that's one benefit of the lectures you know like and that's we have a very experienced team also we give you uh, the lectures are available uh, during all their all your time you know so you can email them if you have questions we also provide drop-in sessions so the teachers will be available in zoom link and you can come and see them for an individual tutorial and if you have if there's any part of the courses that you're not familiar with then you can ask them questions in a uh, in a comfortable environment uh, also we provide uh, feedback and feed forward so that uh, when you're doing your coursework or your homework you're provided continuous feedback to help you improve your skills and your knowledge uh, and that also we, we we're looking forward as well that we're trying to prepare you for your final exams and also making you um, more independent learners and ultimately getting you ready to study in university next year so we have a combination of different uh, interactions with your lecturers you know that we're not the gatekeepers of knowledge we don't have all the answers but we can guide you and we can make you better students and give you a more fuller experience of um the courses at the ifc great thanks connell um lorraine i've got a question here that's come in to um students are asking what happens if i'm struggling is there help available and maybe you could expand on what type of help is available for a student who's struggling academically or they're finding it difficult to follow things online? 
Thank you very much for that, Ray. It's a lovely question mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's, a, it's one that actually I, I, uh, I do quite well, uh, that we do quite well in DIFC. Um, there are plenty of opportunities for you to get help from us. Uh, we have a complete commitment to you to make sure that you know what's going on at all times. You don't fall behind, uh, that you... Uh, understand what's going on, that you feel free and open uh, and uh, with us to ask us questions uh, and we're here to answer them for you. We create opportunities for you to ask us questions. We do that in every class that we give you. Uh, we do it after class. We do it by email. We do it in individual uh, sessions. Uh, if we see, say, that homework has not been submitted, we will uh, catch up with you and ask you if everything is okay. We take an, an attitude of, uh, of a check-in with you uh, and an attitude that uh, our, our, our goal here is to help you out and make sure that you reach your potential. Uh, for example, I was talking about the, the, the labs there. So what would happen is you would prepare a draft lab report. You would send it to me. I would then correct it. I would then give you feedback on it. And we could then also meet up to discuss the feedback if you were uncertain about things. So, uh, and it's not just that you get assessment support uh, throughout the year. So you're not given a task without knowing what, how to do it. You're guided with classes as to what to put into each task. We assume nothing. We assume that you, every, this is your first time doing things. Uh, you're not expected to know how to do these things. You're here to learn. Uh, you're expected to, to make mistakes. We're here to help you. Um, and and that's, that's our goal. Um, so hopefully I've, I've answered that question there for that student, Ray. Great. Thanks very, uh, very much, Ray. Sorry, sorry Ray. Dennis, go, go ahead. Yeah, could I just jump in there following on from both Connell and Lorraine's point? Of I course. suppose it's important to remember that GIFC, uh, while we mimic what might happen in university, we are not a university. Therefore, we are much, much smaller. You know, so many people ask, how, how will I get all this attention from my teacher? Because they envisage that it's a huge classroom with a huge college, but that's not how it works. For that's example, a great point. Yeah, for example, in EAP class, uh, actually there is uh, a, a directive which says that you can't have more than 15 students in an EAP classroom, you know, uh, and usually it wouldn't even be 15. So for the moment, for example, my EAP group has 12 students, you know, so that follows on from what Lorraine was saying that we, we therefore can give individual students more time, you know, so that is one of our key benefits that our classrooms are small. Uh, this works better for the students who uh, will be less intimidated to work with each other in a smaller group, but also it allows the teacher uh, uh, much more, uh, many more chances and opportunities to get to the students and to identify the weak student. Sometimes students are struggling and they don't even know they're struggling. You know, this is not uh, unnormal for them. Uh, so, uh, I think our small groups uh, are the key, and as Colin was pointing out in the tutorial, uh, each student has a one-to-one -one tutorial with their own tutor every week. This is compulsory, this is mandatory, you know, where the, the student and the tutor, they get uh, 10 to 15 minutes one-to-one -one time. You know, and this is a really valuable time for teachers and students to try to identify what, if something is going wrong, what is it, but more importantly, how to fix it, you know, because it's in our interest, it's in your interest to make sure that problems are resolved before they get too deep and, and, and there's no comeback. Absolutely. And like, that's, that's a great point because normally I'm traveling all over the world. And it's something that I use on a daily basis when I'm saying to students that because of our class sizes being, you know, kept small, we can teach as a group, but we can also give that individual attention that you yeah. can't do if you've got 50 or 60 students in a lecture theatre. Yeah. Um, Neil, maybe you could just touch on, um, because obviously we have students here from all over the world and they're asking what a typical timetable would look like because we're dealing with different time zones, etc. 
So maybe you could just talk about that for a minute or two. Um, sure, yeah. Um, so the timetable usually runs from where we've been trying to vary it um, in um, recently. Um, and we've been splitting a lot of the classes into different time zones. So um, we'll try to do that as much as possible. Like, for example, we're grouping students who are maybe in the Middle East and in that time zone. And then maybe in a different time zone, we're trying to um, have different groups as well from in uh, perhaps in Asia in those time zones and then maybe in different time zones in um, in South America. But generally, these will still kind of revolve around nine to five in um, Irish time. So at the moment, it is 1036 in Ireland. So classes would normally yeah. start at nine o'clock um nine o'clock or, or, um, or, or we have some at eight o'clock as well yeah we started to do some at eight o'clock as well so we will try and accommodate and try to facilitate that as much as possible but for the most part they will be students will be studying from eight o'clock to uh five o'clock not straight through, obviously, but you probably have about six um, hours of class per day. Okay, great. Thanks, Neil. Mm -hmm. um, another student has just asked, can we just confirm what the start date is? Now, we know that it's the 11th of January 2021, but maybe you could just touch on what will happen that week. Um, in the first week? Yeah. Um, yeah, so the first week is just induction um, and a lot of that will be kind of will be introducing you to the software that we are using. Um, so we use we use Microsoft Teams and um, so you'll all get a Microsoft Office uh, platform. And um, so we will be setting all that um, all that software up for you. We use Zoom, um, which you can see we're using at the moment. Um, we will be registering you with NCUK and uh, registering you with, uh, with um, DIFC. And uh, we'll be introducing you to the lectures, introducing you to the student services and introducing you to placement. So the first week of inductions will be a lot of introductions. There will be, um, and uh, just getting you used to the software, getting you used to um, getting you used to the platforms that we are using and getting you used to the lectures and uh, introducing you to the students as well. And there'll be a lot of getting to know you activities. Okay, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Dennis, um, I have a question for you, which I get asked on a weekly basis, um, which is, will taking the PMP improve my GPA to get me into a better university? Now, I know the answer, but I'd like you to talk about this a little bit, please. Uh, yes, so the answer is no. Uh, yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, the, the, the uh, PMP program will not improve your GPA because your GPA is set, you know, and there is absolutely nothing anybody can ever do about it now. However, this is not the end of the road, you know. There are lots and lots of options for students uh, without a very high GPA. So um, I think a lot of people get a little bit stuck on the GPA issue and they think, oh, if I don't have an X uh, a level of GPA, I can go nowhere. That's not true. Our placement office um, will, will work with you to, to try and uh, work out all the different options that you have. There are many ways into a master's program, you know? Uh, there are many uh, routes that you can take. Uh, there are many courses on offer that maybe you haven't had a chance to explore yet. So um, GPA uh, is important, uh, uh, but, but we need to be clear that the GPA that you have is the GPA that you will keep. You know, I, I will be uh, not able to change anything. But um, absolutely. Yeah. And, but and, I yeah, absolutely. And what I, what I tell everybody is, while there's no academic uplift from the pre-masters, the, the pre-masters program is designed to help you to get a stronger masters. And ultimately, having a stronger masters yeah. leads to a better job. Yeah. So then, um, the last question I have for you guys, um, 
is uh, if you could just maybe one by one, so we'll start with you, Connell, uh, your top tip for students who are considering of joining DIFC in January, what would your number one top tip be to those students? Uh, to prepare for their studies or while they're with us? Well, it can be, it can be either. It's, it's your top tip. Okay, my, 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 my <laughs> top tip would be to be open-minded, uh, okay, to, uh, to be open to new experiences, uh, to be open to new ways of learning, to be open to meeting new people, to be open to different ways of studying. You now, just be, uh, to, to be open-minded, that would be my number one tip. Right, thanks very much, because I know you were definitely put on the spot with that one of the others. <laughs> uh, Lorraine, can I come to you for the same question, please? Uh, of course, Ray, and uh, Connell stole my thunder there, so I have to quickly <laughs> come up with another one. There is, there is advice that I give students when I see them first on induction week, and I'm going to give you the same advice, and it is this. This is a clean slate for you, regardless of any previous experience that you've had in chemistry, maths, biology, physics, whatever subject it is, you have a fresh opportunity with us. I, I would like to hope that your previous experience in education has been a good one. And it, it saddens me when students have had poor educational experiences, teachers that don't understand, teachers that don't listen, punitive measures, this kind of thing. E education, you know, should be a, a wonderful experience for, for you. Uh, and I would say that when you come to DIFC, you are not going to be prejudged by us. You know, you are starting new. You can change bad habits. You can change up your grades. You have a chance. And I would say, take the opportunity. Fantastic. Thanks, Thank Lorraine. Uh, Dennis, I'm really looking forward to your top tip. Yeah, so I would mirror what the previous two speakers have said. They've taken the best two points. But I would say uh, the best thing to do is to just jump pain really you know i think with decisions like this uh, especially in relation to education you, sometimes you just have to think what's the worst that can happen you know the worst is that it's six months uh the best that can happen is that it will open your eyes uh to a whole range of new opportunities new subjects, uh, meet new people, explore new cultures. Uh, there can only be good to come out at the end of that. So I would say just go for it, you know? Fantastic. And finally, our centre manager, Neil. Yeah, I think you just, I think it's really important to take advantage of this time. I think, um, and you know, like personally, I started a master's back in October. Um, the, one of the reasons that I started it was because um you know that i'm not um i have time on my hands you know um we are in lockdown and we're going through a pandemic so what better way to spend your time than to study um you don't want to waste another year and this is a really good opportunity to just get stuck into something you know there's a um and not and just get stuck into study and it is a great way to um pass the time and it's a great way to you know it's really really benefit you in the future and then your main focus should be on starting um, university in September 2021. And I think we can really help you to do that. Fantastic. Um, so that ends our session um, with, I suppose, all of our program managers and our centre manager. I'd like to thank Neil, Dennis, Sorry, Lorraine. Ryan. Sorry to interrupt. There's just one more question. Okay, yeah. Oh, um, is it possible to move in Ireland while being in level five lockdown? Is it possible to move in Ireland, is it? Yeah, I, I think that might be move to Ireland. Move to Ireland. Yeah. Uh, yes, is the, yes is the short answer because we've already had some students who started online in September who've already got their visas and have come to Ireland to continue their online studies here to join the in-class programmes in January. Mm -hmm. um, right now, there's a two-week quarantine, which is um, a, a requirement from our government. So when you come in, you must quarantine for two weeks. And with New Mill, for students who are coming in January, um, they can actually get the quarantine period free of charge, which we will touch on a little bit later uh, this morning. Okay, and I have another question. A lot of questions are coming in now. <laughs> um, will I get a certificate after the DIFC program? Neil, maybe if you want to talk to this. 
uh, yes, you get a certificate, you get, um, and you get a, um, what do you get actually? Um, transcript. Transcript, yes, yeah, sorry, that's the word. You get a transcript, uh, which you can then give to the university and um, we'll, we'll process the transcript as well, because like placement is just, is a big part of DIFC. So placing the students into, into university with their transcripts um, transcript is similar to a certificate. So yes, you will. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and a, another question. Um, hi teachers, can online class be playback or just live? Connell, do you want to talk to this? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so, so this is a very good question, you know, and it's something that we did a lot of soul searching over the summer about, you know, and what makes DIFC special, you know, like, uh, and this is, you know, basically we want to mimic what a real class environment is like you know so a real interaction with students and i don't think you get the same experience from from recorded sessions where you can learn some of the same stuff on youtube but you're not getting the same educational experience so we, we think that the, the the best experience that you have will be online with your teachers and with your classmates but having said that if you do miss classes the sessions are recorded that you can watch them back or maybe there's something that you missed and then they, they will be available as recordings as well okay perfect and just one more comment has come in um and um it's the next available in date can it be extended to march keeping in view of international travel now in that instance um that is why we're offering the fully online option to start our intake starts in january and it's and it can't be extended till March because there's a volume of the curriculum that needs to be covered in that time. So students that aren't able to travel in January, we would suggest that you start on the fully online option. And if you want to then come at a later date to join the in-class programs, we can talk to you about that and, and try and facilitate that where possible in terms of visas and that sort of thing. So I would suggest that students that aren't available to travel in January to join the fully online option and we can try and support you to um, join the in-class teaching at a later date. Uh, another question. Um, if I pay fees for blended courses but may convert to fully online course because of board limit, is it convenient? So if you have registered or if you are registering um, for the in-class blended option starting in January and you get to January and you can't travel because there's restrictions in your country that you can't leave, um, then that yes, you can, you can swap to the online, the fully online option and all you need to do is speak to your, um, the, the, your DIFC contacts or the recruitment manager who's dealing with your application and we can help you with that. Okay, is there any more questions? I think that if there are any more questions, we can cover those in our session afterwards anyway. Um, yep. I'm conscious of the time with the program managers uh, yep. also having to get, get to classes and things like that as well. So again, just want to thank Neil, Dennis, Lorraine and Connell. Um, your input has been absolutely valuable this morning. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye.